Ready to give intermittent fasting a try? Well, it might be a great decision and help with more things than just your weight loss journey. I'm Mike, I'm a fat guy who's trying to not be fat anymore by making lifestyle changes. In today's video, we're taking a deeper dive into the world of intermittent fasting and how we can use it to supercharge our results and really improve our life. So grab a water bottle and let's get started. Intermittent fasting has gained a tremendous amount of popularity for good reason and really it's really an effective weight loss approach as well because it kind of, again, limits the time that you can eat. So obviously it helps if you're you know trying to be in a caloric deficit that you have less time to eat, it's harder to eat as much. So. What is it exactly though, before we get into all of its benefits, I probably should start it with that, but actually it's pretty straightforward. It's not a diet, it's rather an eating pattern that you know you, you shorten the amount of time that you eat. And if you're new to intermittent fasting, we have done a video, check it out in the channel. But if you don't wanna watch that video, a quick of intermittent fasting is essentially, again, just limiting your feeding window or the time that you eat throughout the day to a shorter period. So then your body can really do some different cell design and move things around. Really, it also, of course, is helpful for a weight loss journey. And there are various methods that you can choose from when it comes to intermittent fasting. There's the 16-8, which is again, where you eat for eight hours and don't eat for 16. There's also the 5-2 method, which is where you eat for five days of the week and take two days off. And then there's alternate day fasting, which sounds pretty rough. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that, but you know, there are a lot of different ways that you can structure this, you know, intermittent fasting, but really it involves a cycle of periods, again, of fasting and feasting, or again, eating and not eating. So, that's what it is. And it has a ton of benefits. You know, intermittent fasting goes well beyond just weight loss. In fact, weight loss, I almost would say is secondary. I think most of it comes with the cognitive improvement. And uh, I think a big improvement also a really help is when it comes to productivity, you have less time that you're going to be preparing food and for, you know, eating. So it's really helpful really when it comes to cognitive function and with your productivity. But research studies have also shown that it can also improve insulin sensitivity, boost your metabolic health, and even support cellular repair. So by giving your body these periods of rest from digestion, it has a chance to really kind of reset and optimize other functions in the body. Another study published in the Journal of Obesity really has indicated that intermittent fasting can improve insulin sensitivity, which is again, like we said, crucial for maintaining stable blood sugar and overall metabolic health. So like I said, it does seem that in Intermittent fasting can be really helpful for a lot of people, but I do think it's important that we note that it's not for everybody, specifically if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or you're on diabetes or other health heart concerns, it might not be a good idea to just jump on intermittent fasting without talking to your doctor first. So definitely recommend, again, consult with your healthcare provider before trying intermittent fasting or really changing anything up in your dieting and you know lifestyle before you talk to your doctor. They can give you advice and make sure that it's safe and right for you. If it is right for you, here are some practical tips to get you started. First, plan your meals and try to do it carefully, ensuring that you're getting all your necessary nutrients within that eating window. So again, you don't want to be nutrient deficient in any micronutrients. And obviously, you know, if you're going to do intermittent fasting, I'm not sure that's good to do any sort of heavy diet of like keto or carnivore and, you know, cutting out massive macronutrient food groups either. But when it comes to micros, really, if you have less time, you're eating less food, make sure you're eating a well balanced diet of whole foods, nutrient dense foods to make sure that you're not going to be deficient in any micronutrient. And again, micronutrients are vitamins, minerals, things like that. Next, pay attention to the timing of your fast schedule fast that really works best for you. Don't force it because you read some study that, you know, says it's better to fast in the afternoon. So eat in the mornings. And if you're super busy in the morning, don't force it. Like I said, do what's right for you and what works for your schedule. And remember, with either way that you do it, stay hydrated. Making sure you're getting enough water is absolutely key. Never, ever do a dry fast. Always be getting even more water in if you're going to be fasting because it really helps your body with its processes. So keep that water bottle handy. Even if you're in a fasting period, make sure you're drinking water. Next up, I wanted to debunk some really common myths that I found when doing research on intermittent fasting. So myth number one was fasting leads to muscle loss. Now, I would say that's false, but assuming it's false for someone who's like me, who you're severely overbeast and you have a surplus of fat on your system. If you were someone who was very lean and you were to do an intermittent fast, specifically if you were going to be in any sort of caloric deficit, your body's going to have to get that energy from somewhere. So obviously it could take it from muscle, but 
Assuming that you're like me, and again, you have a large surplus of fat on your frame, it's not going to take it from muscle first, it's going to try to eat your fat. So really, this is a myth in the world of intermittent fasting that fasting leads to muscle loss. And again, I should say this is all assuming that you're doing intermittent fasting correct, and you're not going crazy on this, and that again, your body will try to preserve muscle mass and promote fat loss when you're doing intermittent fasting just naturally. On the flip side of that myth, there's also no signs or studies that show that muscle mass is improved or promoted or any studies that say that your testosterone levels increase by a 1,300 percent when you do intermittent fasting. I've noticed that that's been going around. There's this, I forget what her name was, is she's like the doctor guru something and she says that testosterone in men increases 1,300 percent when you do intermittent fasting. We also see in men 1300 percent increase in testosterone just from somewhere between a 13 to 15 hour fast stop the cap <laughs> stop the cap right now there's absolutely no studies that have said that that's not founded in fact or really research so i would consider that a myth it's not really you know fasting isn't something that i would say is done for muscle development and growth it's more helpful for weight loss if anything but again i already talked about that really when you're doing intermittent fasting the primary benefits come in improved productivity because you're not spending as much time worrying about food cooking food eating food and then secondly in the cognitive improvement in the clarity that you have from you know just when your body's in a fasted state so that myth kind of goes both ways. It doesn't really help or hurt muscle mass, you know, depending on who you are and where you're at with your weight loss journey. People say that fasting slows down your metabolism, which again, assuming that you're somebody like me who has a lot of fat on the frame and you're doing intermittent fasting correctly, again, that's a big part. Assuming you're doing things wrong, well, yeah, you can go off the rails in a lot of different ways, but assuming that you're doing it correctly and you have a lot of fat on your frame, no, it does not destroy your metabolism by, you know, structuring your eating window in a limited time. Your body doesn't just shut down your metabolism if you don't eat for, you know, 16 hours. It takes a longer, more, far more extended time of fasting to really start affecting your metabolism or really your metabolic function changing. Really, I think this myth comes from a lot of people who have got excited about intermittent fasting and they do it all wrong and then they're yeah, their metabolism slows down because they do a lot of other mistakes that are built on top of that. Where intermittent fasting correctly alone does not slow down your metabolic rate, does not really change your metabolic function or processes in the body that way. Really, if anything, like I said, it more leans towards fat burning potential than slowing down your metabolism. The fourth myth is thinking that intermittent fasting alone without liking and subscribing to the Weight Warriors channel is gonna get everything done. All right, I'm joking with this one, obviously, but if you are enjoying this video, please like it. It does help us and comment down below and obviously subscribe if you're not subscribed already. But I do joke with that, but the myth is that intermittent fasting is going to be your savior and that it's not. A sustainable weight loss journey is something that takes far more than just a few changes to your feeding window. Really, you're looking at your nutrition, making sure you're getting the right foods in, that you're increasing your activity, and like I said, making sure that your just overall health is in check. Intermittent fasting is great, but it's not this like massive savior that it seems to be kind of getting the reputation for online nowadays. Again, I think it's great. and I. I've been doing intermittent fasting for a long time, but going into it with this assumption that this is going to deliver these, you know, this is going to be the thing that you've been looking for, I think is a myth. And I did want to note a few challenges or really negatives that in my opinion come with intermittent fasting, especially in the beginning, it can be a challenge to really get in the routine of it if it's something you haven't been doing and you've been really religious about having breakfast every single day or you just love having that snack before you go to bed. It is a big ask to limit someone's feeding window to eight hours. It doesn't seem like it on paper because you think, well, you know, I'll just skip breakfast or have an early dinner, but it does take a little bit of getting used to and that is obviously a notable challenge. And with that, I would recommend trying to experiment with different fasting methods and times to find what suits best for you. And remember that this is about progress, not perfection. So just trying to do, you know, a little bit better each day is going to be helpful in the long run. I hope this video has been helpful when it comes to looking at intermittent fasting and if it's right for you and looking at some of the myths and things that, like I said, I think kind of goes kind of crazy online with things, but it is a powerful tool. And again, I do it all the time. I think it's great for weight loss. It's more helpful, I think, for overall improving your health. Um, like I said, definitely helps with just time and staying focused. But remember, it's really important to listen to your body and be patient and with yourself with the small wins and really make sure that intermittent fasting, if you're going to do it, that it's right for you and don't force it. So that's my advice. Take it with your will, but really enjoy the journey and try to remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. So until next time, stay strong and keep leveling up.